Hello friends and this is Rekha Karup and I'm continuing the conversation on trauma and I'm remaking the um, video on the limbic system and the uh, frontal, uh, prefrontal cortex uh, aspects of our brain uh, because I felt as I was listening to it, re-listening to the video I made last it felt like it was all over the place. I was confused, so I felt that um, I need to remake it. And uh, so I feel I'm in a more calmer place, a more together, put together place. So hoping that this uh, video works out. It's interesting that I was going to make this sympathetic and I was like, you know, uh, too much of activation and stimulation in that. So yeah, so uh, brain development, right, happens three stages of the brain development. First is the first comes is the reptilian brain, which is what is the zero to two months, you know, which is the reptilian brain's role is housekeeping. Yeah, all the housekeeping aspects is what the reptilian brain does, which is about, uh, you know, what a baby does. Yeah. So what does a baby do, right? A baby's only job is eating, sleeping, crying, breathing, pooping, peeing. Um, you know, that's what a baby does. Uh, and uh, feeling. So there's a feeling of this body. So wetness, temperature, these are the things that the baby can feel. So this is in short for that. That's how a baby is. So if you are pulled into the reptilian brain, through trauma or through something, then it is that a baby can't do much. It is not mobile, right? Imagine a zero to two month old baby. What it is so much at the beck and call. It is really can't do much, right? It is completely uh, at the beck and call of everybody around it. It doesn't, it cannot speak. It doesn't have language to express itself. So it's only doing the basic thing and for everything. And even for that, it needs everyone else. So when you're, when you get activated or when the reptilian brain, reptilian brain is the last resort of survival, which is about conserving all the energy to survive. Yeah, everything gets conserved to survive. It's the freeze response. It's also the fawn response, which is actually the fawn response is like a complete numbness. Nothing is really functioning. Only these basic functions uh, of just maybe sometimes just the breath is happening. That's all because that's how the, uh, the, the being can survive, the human being can survive. And in extreme cases of trauma, uh, this is the system that people survive through uh, after this most brutal experience of abuse or violence that they survive in this freeze response, you know. And you wonder how could they? Yeah, but that is, you know, we the brain ensures at any cost survival till the last mode and freeze the reptilian brain is the last resort but then from reptilian brain as you will see in polyvagal theory to climb back up into cognition and thinking and language and communication is a long arduous slow patient process right so that's a reptilian brain and then comes the limbic system so limbic system is also called the limbic brain. It's also called as the mammalian brain. Yeah. So if you see reptiles, they don't move in herds. They are solo. They're individual. Yeah. Like if you think of a snake or a lizard, a cockroach, things in your home that you can even look at that. No, they are all, they are, they are not moving like yeah, in packs and they're not about social connection. They are very, uh, aloof solo hiding they don't like so many of these are nocturnals they don't like light uh, you know so that's how they scutter and scuttle uh, out, out of sight right but ma ma mammals if you look at mammals uh, all the mammals from a cat to a dog to a cow to a tiger to a lion to an elephant to a whale uh, you can see in mammals uh, there is this aspect of play caring, touch, yeah, 
and lazing, resting, you know, this experience of uh, that and being together. So they will huddle together. They will sit together, even if it's the herd of a lion or a tiger. You'll see how they all are. And if the cubs, the babies, you can see how they love to play. That aspect of experiencing life as play as pain, as pleasure, as fighting, even playfully to fight with each other, uh, you know, to um, have fun, to have fun and to experience. It's actually a uh, limbic system is it creates this autobiographical experience of my life. So the limbic system, the entire limbic system is what makes each one of us very unique. So if you have a, if you are a parent, if you look at your child, you know, you can see that from two months onwards is when the limbic system starts coming. You know, the child would child starts to see, uh, starts to respond to what it sees. And so how you respond to the child, uh, how you show up, that's when the child needs all the input because that is from reptilian brain of this complete mergence with uh, not knowing the other. The mammalian brain is about seeing and in the way that they see us, it's about the mirror neurons also start acting during that time that we start becoming our own person. So mammalian brain is that emotional aspect, you know, uh, uh, how we respond to something, um, how we move towards something or move away from something and even the ability to say, no, I don't like it, you know, and this is the age. Uh, you know, kids, you know, you, you give, you try to make a child eat what it does not like. It doesn't need language. It'll, do, it'll, you know, throw off food. You know, kids can, they move their arms. You know, they learn to move their arms. They're, they're trying to crawl. They try all possible ways. They really um, express, a, begin to express a personality in this time. A very subtle personality like, what they like, what they do not like, who they want to go towards, who they don't want to come near, and the mother, you know. So the, uh, their love for the mother or how the mother sees them and slowly they start seeing others. So this is this time, you know. So two months onwards till I think next 12, till the child is 12 to 16 months old, 12 months, two years, right? Two to two years, this system and up to even three years, this system is really coming online. This mammalian system, our ability to learn to coordinate, cooperate, um, connect, yeah? Uh, you know, so if you see animals, if you see a cat, how she would keep licking her cubs again and again and they are on top of her all of them are sucking at her breasts uh, you know they are playing with her they will keep pulling a tail they will bite her tail and she will if you see the mother cat she will be lying down and taking as much pain she will wonder oh my god look at these babies you know they the the little kittens sometimes they are like so mean on the mother if there are four or five you know in our building we store they're very cute but you could see them you could see the mother's love there in mammals you can really see you know you can see that this is very real and it is a weaning of the child and this period up to three to four years, you know, the baby has to be held and the, the mother and the baby have to fall in love with each other. This is what informs uh, our um, emotional maturity, yeah, to be in completely in love, uh, you know, and everyone, baby, it's not just the mother and the father who are um, holding the baby but uh, you know research today says that says that indigenous cultures the baby gets passed around it is never um, uh, allowed to even uh, cry so much the baby is crying people lift it baby is always near you know uh, everyone is rocking this movement of rocking the baby all that uh, really helps in the development of a very a plausible, robust limbic system. So what does the limbic system consist of? The limbic system consists of the hypothalamus, which is right above the brainstem. And hypothalamus is what is responsible for homeostasis. 
this where the sympathetic and parasympathetic are balanced our inhalation is joyful and our exhalation is restful so we can this movement right that is the hypothalamus but the hypothalamus is also the one which when it detects danger it sends the message it it uh, brings the sympathetic nervous system completely online mobilizes fight or flight response by accelerating the heart Uh, releasing adrenaline or cortisol so it is also the one that does that it is also the one that if that doesn't work if the fight or flight does not work it is the one that also uh, then tells the parasympathetic nervous system that sympathetic is not working it works through the vagal nerve to initiate the parasympathetic response of basic survival and conservation of the freeze or fawn response yeah so this so hypothalamus is like a very powerful uh part of the limbic system and with the hypothalamus above the hypothalamus is the amygdala which is like the core emotional seat of the limbic system and the job of the amygdala is the smoke detector so smoke you know how a smoke detector is if you have a smoke detector in a house it doesn't it it only it keeps checking for is there is there, a, is there some problem is there smoke it doesn't say is it from incense it doesn't know that is it from incense or is it a, a fire is this going to burn down the house it doesn't have that kind of thing it'll just say so i remember when we lived in the us you burn a incense or you do a small yagya or you light camphor the smoke detector would go offline so our first job would be to you know take the batteries off or put it off so that it doesn't go off so the smoke detector doesn't know that and amygdala is exactly like that that it doesn't check the minute it has even little cue that there's there could be danger its job you know it it works on this emotional impulse attack you know it is it it rushes and and it is directly connected to the hypothalamus so it going this is the message is sent to the hypothalamus like hey there is danger come on activate so the hypothalamus it's the low road it is a fast movement so before so before the message from amygdala two messages go one to the hypothalamus and the other goes to the frontal cortex our brain our which is actually the watch tower the thinking tank the the logical brain before it can detect that hey it is incense yeah or and, and not a fire it might be that this amygdala ha, the body has already responded that is why when you are walking and amygdala works with the hippocampus so hippocampus you can say it's like the ram you know it it has all the stored memory yeah and uh, and it is like the uh, yeah it's it has all our memories past experiences and things like that and hippocampus is fully developed at the age of 3 that is why many times we do not have memory before 3 we may have bodily sensations because the reptilian brain was there so the viscera is very much in stock of all the sensations but memory is not there hippocampus is not ready before the age of 3 at 3 is when it fully developed so that's when so from you know, i feel Uh, two and a half after two and a half three is when we really have memories that we can recall uh, and um, you know for some kids it may not be if you are uh, the environment so this is what is what is what is being shown now that if the home environment for a child during the development you know of the reptilian and the mammalian brain is not fully conducive for safety and connection and you're not seen and loved and laughed with and you know those who are in your life they are not in love with you they are not fully in love with you uh, then all these organs don't parts of the brain do not fully develop so for some folks depending upon your home environment and what was whether you were seen or whether you were paid attention to or neglected based on that your hippocampus might not have those memories might as uh, its development might be delayed yeah it is possible so the hippocampus and the amygdala work together yeah so the amygdala 
So if so for so I was giving this example, say you're walking, you know, sometimes it's how this happens. You're walking and you just jump because you saw like you saw a snake. But the movement of jump happens way faster than you realize it, oh, that was a rope. The reflex, if you cannot fully see it, if it's not fully seen like that, if it's just a wish and somewhere it's like from your periphery or things like that, it comes, you, your body would automatically jump. And then you say, oh, it's, it's just a rope. But for some to come back, to, oh, it's just a rope might not happen because the neocortex is not fully functional. So these are the things that we become really cued into when we are connecting with somebody, right? What is available to them and why they are not able to fully connect with us. Okay, so this is something. So we have the amygdala, which is a smoke detector working in the hippocampus, sending message to the hypothalamus. And it on top is the thalamus. Yeah, so thalamus, uh, Basil van der Kolk calls it the cook. It's the cook, it's the chef. Yeah, so it can just be a cook or it could be a chef. Yeah, so it depends on, um, I think, our early childhood development. Yeah, uh, so it is the one which puts everything together. Yeah. Uh, oh, what's going on? So it is the one who has communication to the prefrontal cortex. Uh, it has the information from the amygdala and it puts everything together and it says, oh, what's going on? Oh, should I, maybe I should also do this. You know, so it is like the, uh, the entire experience. It is what is actually creating the autobiographical experience. So if our thalamus is not fully developed, then it is very difficult to really be in that experience of who I am the emotional experience, to really go there, to fully receive it, to fully uh, know it as a whole body experience becomes very difficult. Yeah. So this is the limbic system. So the limbic system is what allows us to really feel, even fear um, uh, and to respond to a threat, to, to be able to fight for oneself is... Um, or to escape danger, yeah? And now whatever may be, even if it's trauma, right? Uh, even if others, but so it is important that we, we are always supported to respond as children. Yeah, whatever may be, that, you know, children's response, I don't like the word should, you know? Uh, children's response cannot be curbed. You know, that, and so how do you say that? How do you mirror a behavior to a child in the way that you don't uh, put a stopper on the fight flight response for the child? Yeah, so the child always has to be able to fight or, uh, f you know, and it should not feel guilty about that. And, you know, of course, the body acts. This is not something the child or any of us cognitively do. Our body does that instinctly but when there is trauma the instinct itself can get debilitated this instinct doesn't work anymore yeah and uh, so that's the limbic system the emotional brain so in this i'm also going to talk about the frontal lobe the prefrontal cortex especially this part so all of this you know this entire front lobe of the brain is actually so phenomenal this is what gives us the ability this is where the human brain becomes different from all mammals. This ability, we have this ability to uh, speak language, create language. We have this ability for cognition, you know, to analyze uh, for complete, abs we can be absolute and relative, you know, to hold that. Um, to be able to have uh, this un uh, understanding of time. The concept of time is only in human beings. No other life 
has a concept of time. We have created a clock. We understand. We look at. We see separate things as separate. That all that kind of intelligence that we call is part of the neocortex. Is part of our cortex, our upper, you know, the upper part of the brain, which actually starts developing only from twelve to sixteen. It is firing, right? And so it takes twenty-four years for all our our brain to have. completely functional nerve circuitry it's like when we are born we have all these nerves but they are not connected it's like we have like if you have worked with if you seen the circuit board of a computer it's only when things are connected that we have a functioning uh, you know we can have all these things but if they are not connected interconnected all the points then the flow of air uh, uh, current doesn't happen and it doesn't function so in the same way we are born with uh, i think 500 million or so uh, uh, neurons and then the first 24 the first 5 years is the fastest firing firing means what from this huge bulk they all start becoming condensing because then they get fired and they so our life experiences get coded so it's like this blank canvas and then painting is happening on it so this is what is happening in the first 5 years is when majority of the firing is done and then slowly more firing happens and happens and by 24 years is when we have after that the firing ability to make more newer a connection is in the brain kind of debilitates but you can you know if you keep a healthy lifestyle uh and make a very conscious movement you can still keep uh shifting the brain the brain is very elastic yeah so it can keep molding and shifting so but the first 5 years of our life pretty much uh can kind of show how far we can go in our life and then we hit a roadblock and then we have to come back and start rearranging the circuitry yeah looking at what is held in the emotional part of the brain what is um what is uh, what is um paused or stopped in the reptilian brain and that's the work we do we kind of start so that that uh, homeostasis move of the brain can be restored back right so the neocortex is the watchtower it is what looks from top and says oh that's not danger yeah you can you queuing that and the neocortex it it is connected to our our eyes our ears our you know um uh, the the sensation of touch our throat muscles they are all kind of connected with our uh, cortical brain or the neocortex and so so to when we have that we can really see oh is there my body is saying me that i don't like it but we we pause there we breathe we look and say oh it's it's not i can hold it i can hold this anxiety because i am my mind is also watching it is available it is here i don't have to immediately react and respond to the situation i can hold it and then you know i can respond but when the neocortex itself so neocortex development happens again uh you know we start learning languages sometimes i actually started speaking very early in my life i think one year and or three or three years i was like fluent as speaking hindi and malayalam and all the you know so um i think my neocortex development was quite um uh There was a lot of stimuli because I was in the army, surrounded by different people of different languages, and had full freedom to go and speak and meet and mingle with people. Uh, I think I learned all that uh, very fast. And but when we don't have that, when we are constantly um, not allowed to speak or you know to be have our free movement. you know when our limbic system itself is kind of curved or hurt then the development of the neocortex on top of it also gets debilitated yeah and um, yeah so once so the first 5 years of our environment informs the brain yeah so our entire environment is also coded into the brain so the the environment creates the brain and then the brain responds to the environment or creates the environment so it's mutual so the first 5 years of a child is so important 
how parents show up for the child, you know, um, to be constantly there for the child, to allow the child to be stimulated and to, you know, uh, to learn on its own. That is the age when a child goes and grabs things, explores, investigates, breaks. All of this, a child has to be allowed. Can't say, don't touch that, don't touch that. that you know, that doesn't work for the child. So if you have a child in your house, allow the child to explore the walls, break things, go wherever the child wants to open drawers, dismantle things. All this has to be really allowed. That gives the child, uh, as it grows up, to have this freedom to explore go where it wants to yeah and uh, I'll speak more about this when I talk about developmental trauma but you know but uh, it's uh, and we have to see the child not as this um, uh, unintelligent no we have to see the child as a person and it is in, in many times in India you know I see that it is a one-way street it is only coming from the parent to the child the wisdom of the child is not being mirrored back or listened. The child is not listened to really. Yeah. Uh, the child is told. So I I feel that that first five years, it is a two-way street. Yeah. Even when you are saying behavior, I hope it's not cultural. Behaviors of a child, you know, when we teach kindness, when we teach respect, it is not in the sitting or, you know, all those things, the cultural things we have to really start looking at because we are becoming a global community. We are no longer restricted to our little uh, borders of our land. We are now a global community and we have to be able to meet each other in our humanness, not in our culturalness. Yeah, the culture is fine. It's a very private, personal thing, but I'm even doubting even that now, the purpose it serves as we start mingling as one world community uh, with how do we show up? So how do we, so what behaviors of culture are common and can be, can support us to mingle and connect? That is very important. If it is not, then it is, it, it is time that it is dissolved and it is not passed on to the child. Yeah. So allow the child to really explore and uh, because kindness, um, love, compassion is a natural trait of being human. Yeah. Uh, even being jealous, you will see like even, even in animals, mammals, you can see, you no know, one, they push when one goes to the mother, the other pushes and now the mother then holds both, you know, you see that when you look at nature, and you will know how to really embody emotions, how to really nurture the emotional brain. You can really see that. Uh, uh, and how do we hold that space? So the first five years are very important in this entire development. Spatialness, seeing, you know, like we don't even realize that, that we can say how much time has passed, how much space there is. All this is part of the prefrontal cortex. And if the prefrontal cortex does not develop, People do not have a sense of time, yeah, or they do not understand space and distance and separation. They do not understand that. And also the, you know, the the brain, the, the topmost part of the brain is also what is responsible for order, uh, you know, where things are placed, this kind of seeing, compartmenting things, organizing things, that's also part of the topmost part of the brain. And if that is not fully allowed, you know, certain parts, we have four lobes in the brain. We have the front, then we have the, um, the, the occipital is behind, then we have the peripheral, and then we have this part of the brain, right? One is here, this here. So sight, to be able to see uh, the uh, sound, space, uh, all these kind of things are... Uh, fully you know a part of that so so when so why someone is like that is something you really have to ask this what happened to this person what happened in your life you know you have to start we have to start seeing that in and how people are you know instead of judging and trying to teach and change people we really have to start uh inviting compassion 
so we can hold space for the person so we can connect yeah many times you know so this whole knowing what is the point of knowing all of this what is the point of the brain trying to ensure safety and survival it is also to experience connection especially as human beings yeah as human beings our deepest potential is to connect yeah that is the that is that that is the 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 topmost brain why do we need to access to be able to access the topmost part of the brain with the emotional and the reptilian brain is so that we also can experience connection and what is connection connection is not just sitting and talking and uh, you know uh, talking about all kinds of things that is not connection connection could be experienced in complete silence when you look at someone and you feel seen by the person not even loved yeah it's not love this is what i'm beginning to realize to be seen is more important is very important because in being seen love is already experienced yeah when you see me so the thomas hubel always uses this word in his uh, collective uh, healing uh, collective trauma healing work i feel you feel me that is connection that is reciprocity so there is a flow from you to me and me to you so when i look at you i also see that you are looking back at me you are seeing me you are meeting me you are experiencing me and then i experience connection and that this kind of connection and then what to speak uh, the cooperation the coordination um that is very much a quality of our prefrontal cortex our topmost brain not just prefrontal cortex just our topmost brain so there are three levels of safety as we will see in polyvagal theory to really experience connection we have to climb up the ladder we need to have the reptilian the mammalian brain both feeling safe and then the topmost brain becomes available yeah so once safety is ensured then only the 30% of the brain which is the topmost part of the brain starts functioning so this is my brain development part 2 a limbic system and topmost part of the brain tomorrow i will talk about polyvagal theory neuroception and the three levels of safety that we are always uh maneuvering without even our awareness and to create spaces where people can safely connect we really need to understand polyvagal theory so tomorrow i will come with that so thank you so much i hope you enjoyed i myself feel that this was more coordinated um talk so i hope this was valuable blessed